Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is time for our daily devotion. It's about 1144 in the morning. This is the time that we normally gather together, and so looking forward to an opportunity just to share and some scripture reading, a reflection, um, and some thoughts on that reflection, and a time of prayer. So come and join me. I'll take a few moments to wait for folks to join our live event. Uh, as you do, if you'd like to leave a comment, let me know that you're present. Certainly would love to say good morning to you, so please do that. going to be a nice Wednesday. Here the weather is going to be 80 something. We're going to have a men's pizza night tonight out at Jamie Center's driveway. So we're going to be physical distanced out there and having some pizza. Looking forward to it. Hi, Pat. Good morning to you. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Good morning to both of you. My lovely Mrs. Hoffman downstairs working. Hello, love. She's going to try to listen in over the dog who's barking at anything and everything that moves and creaks. Hi, Shirley. Good morning to you. We'll wait a little bit longer, make sure that folks get a chance to sign in who want to join us. Good morning, Jack. Glad to see you this morning. For those of you who are here, we're going to be reading out of James chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. James chapter 1. Hi, Susan. Good morning. Another beautiful day. You are correct. Wait just a little bit longer. For those of you who are here, again, just a quick reminder, we're going to be reading out of James, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. We'll wait just a few more seconds, and then we'll get started. Actually, it looks like this might be our gang for the morning. <laughs> All right, James chapter 1, verses 1 to 12 says, From James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are scattered outside the land of Israel. Greetings. My brothers and sisters, think of the various tests you encounter as occasions for joy. After all, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let this endurance complete its work so that you may be fully mature, complete, and lacking in nothing. But anyone who needs wisdom should ask God, whose very nature is to give to everyone without a second thought, without keeping score. Wisdom will certainly be given to those who ask. Whoever asks shouldn't hesitate. They should ask in faith without doubting. Whoever doubts is like the surf of the sea tossed and turned by the wind. People like that should never imagine that they will receive anything from the Lord. They're double-minded, unstable in all ways. Brothers and sisters who are poor should find satisfaction in their high status. Those who are wealthy should find satisfaction in their low status because they will die off like wildflowers. The sun rises with its scorching heat and dries up the grass so that its flowers fall and its beauty is lost. Just like that, in the midst of their daily lives, the wealthy will waste away. Those who stand firm during testings are, ble are blessed. They are tried and true. They will receive the life God has promised to those who love him as their reward. And so our devotion is written today by Doug Winger. Doug is from Arizona. His focus verse was verse 12. Blessed is the one 
who preserve, perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And here's the devotion that is offered. I recently took my eight-year-old grandson fishing for the first time. We spent much of the day casting our lines into the middle of the lake. He was excited to catch and release some small sunfish, but he really wanted to catch a bigger fish. As the day wore on, he suggested we cast into the shadows where the water was full of reeds. I told him it would be risky that we would probably get our hooks tangled with the reeds. But Grandpa, he said, I think that's where the big fish live. So we cast into the shadows and our lines got tangled with the reeds more than once. But we persevered and finally knew the thrill of hooking a big fish. Jesus did not promise us that following him would be easy. It may seem safer to keep to our usual routines rather than to take a risk by speaking about and acting in faith. But James tells us that if we faithfully persevere, the Lord promises us a great reward. Years ago, when Skyler was a small boy, uh, we went down to the lake um, where my parents have timeshare, um, and we went, uh, it's Kimberling City, which is down on Table Rock Lake, and, and we went down there, and we took him with us, and, and we went fishing, and sure as the world, he and I were, were doing some fishing, and he, he caught all kinds of a small little perch. I mean, he was just reeling them in. We have a cute picture of him just holding his little fishing line like this with this little dinky perch that's about that big just hanging off the end of it. It's just, it's one of those that you just frame and you have up on your wall. We, we have that picture in our house. Cutest thing ever, right? We, we didn't have, you know, in that area, we didn't have reeds and things like that. You know, really, you had to be persistent to catch a bigger fish. And, and my brother and his wife, my brother Jerry and Janet and, and Rachel, their daughter, they're the ones that would stay up till like 11, 12, 1, 2 in the morning. They'd throw the, you know, a line way out into the lake that would be, you know, one that would go way down to the bottom, hoping that they'd catch a big catfish or something like that. They, you know, they were the ones that persisted in doing that. At that time of the night, Skyler was already ready, you know, for bed, you know, so we'd, we'd have him in bed. It's it's, it's just kind of the, the fun nature of it. I don't know if any of you have ever seen the video on YouTube, though, of the, the little boy who looks like he's about three or four. He's in a pond. You know, he's fishing near a pond, and he's got his little small little Snoopy rod and reel, and he casts that thing out there, and he catches a big old bass on the end of it, and he's just cranking away to get that bass in, and his dad helps him. It, it's pretty. That's pretty cute. It's fun to watch. It takes some perseverance, you know, to, to do some things in life. Fishing is one of those things. You just, you know, you have to persevere when it comes to fishing. Uh, I've been deep sea fishing before um, several times off the coast of Miami. That, that takes some perseverance to be able to catch fish, you know, in deep sea fishing. Um, you, you know, there's just some things about it. And there's a lot of other aspects of life that are like that as well. There's things that come about in our lives, and we simply just have to figure out how to persevere through them. You know, some things in life are fleeting. Other things, they just continue to be there. They're like a nagging ache. It's like having arthritis in, in your joints, and you just know that you know, there's not much they can do about it. You simply have to persevere through it. You have to find mechanisms and ways of dealing with it, especially when it sets into your joints and things, right? There, there's just some aspects of life that we have to persevere. Now, you can respond to this in two ways, right? You can let the, the things that, that you have to persevere through in your life, you can certainly let them become an anchor that drags you down physically and mentally. And you could give in to the negativity of it, and you can become worn down and weary by it, and you can give up hope and, and all your faith. Because that 
thing that you just had persistent and you just cannot make it through. Or you can persevere in faith, knowing that this is only temporary and that God has goodness in mind ultimately for you and for me. And that goodness comes through his love and his grace and comes in the life abundant beyond the temporal that we live in right now. You know, the, the wonderful analogy that, you know, we live in a, we live in a, a temple that is corruptible. Right? It's a vessel that's broken and will eventually decay and die. But yet we have the incorruptible as our eternal promise and heritage. That one day God will give each one of us the immortal and incorruptible body. As we all are raised at the last resurrection and at the new creation. And so what do you want to what do you want to give your life to? What do you want to find yourself invested in? Do you want to just, you know, find yourself giving up because you have to persist in some things in life? Or would you rather grab hold uh, grab hold of of faith and grab hold of the vision that God has that can be now in some ways but will come to fruition in the new kingdom? Yes, for me, I'd rather hold on to the positive vision of what is yet to come, what can be now uh, in its imperfect state, what I can persevere through, and through that perseverance, have my faith tested, molded, shaped, strengthened, all those kinds of things, so that I might inherit the promise of the great reward. How about you? Let's take a moment to pause and pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the wisdom of little children, the ones who encourage us to take a risk and to persevere for the sake of Jesus. Today we pray these things in his name. Amen. Well, thanks everybody for um, joining me today. It was a privilege to have all of you here. So many more of you signed in as we were in the middle of our devotion. It's good to see Michael Ann and Marcella with us. Jack uh, Tennell was able to join with Pat as well. And Barb Meyer, glad to have you here this morning, Barbara. Thanks, everybody, for joining today. I hope you have a blessed rest of your Wednesday. It's a beautiful day outside. Some of us men are going to gather a little bit later, and, and so looking forward to that. But I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow, same time. Same live Facebook channel. So come and join me if you would, please. As we close, take an opportunity to post this to your own timeline so that your friends and your family might get a chance to share in our devotion time. Otherwise, I'll look forward to visiting with you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.